most people ask me about my experiences here, uh, especially like moving in Russia. I mean, in Russia, correct? Yeah, uh, moving here, living here, uh, and it's kind of a difficult question because、mm -hmm. in the U.S., I had so many Russian friends, Armenian, like、mm -hmm. all post-Soviet countries,、um, and I would frequent going to their parties or their restaurants. Mm -hmm. uh, to kind of immerse myself in the culture, because at the time I was studying Russian,、yeah. and part of learning a language is assimilation and、mm -hmm. immersion. And so you have to be connected with the culture. You have to、mm -hmm. be surrounded by the culture. You know, a hundred percent. And like with English, it's so、uh, ubiquitous、mm -hmm. amongst the world. Everybody's seen an American movie. Everybody knows、mm -hmm. what it sounds like.、Mm -hmm. uh, Seventy percent of all research papers are written in English, so yeah, so it's it's a bit of a、uh, a learning curve, but it's a little bit easier to immerse yourself in,、mm -hmm. in the culture. Whereas in the U.S., most people don't know anything about Russia other than cold vodka, bears,、yeah. all the traditional <laughs> stereotypes,、uh, Cold War,、uh -huh. nukes, and that's it.、Um, but they don't know anything deeper than surface level、mm -hmm. stuff. So I had to like research and search out everything. So. I kind of for three years really dove into the culture, and、mm -hmm. so I kind of knew what to expect when coming here because I had done it already.、Uh -huh. However, bureaucracy—that's what you don't kind of understand when you get in there.、Uh, and what I mean by that is like doing immigration processing and hospitals and、yeah. how things work on that、yeah. end. And so I remember when we were renewing my visa.、Mm -hmm. um, I didn't know that you needed to take psych evals for visa processing, and then do the blood tests、yeah. and stuff. And so when we were going through that process, when it came time to renew,、mm -hmm. um, I was taken to the hospital for my appointment,、mm -hmm. and it was it was so funny.、Uh, <laughs> we were basically we signed everything out.、Mm -hmm. I went. To one room to do my psych eval, and I had I've never had one of these before, so I don't know what that、It's、process kind of looks、experience. like. Right, and I'm like, is this guy gonna speak English? Does he even know English?、Uh. How do I answer? Do I have to answer in Russian? <laughs> I was totally freaked out. Like,、okay. yeah, I was just gonna say like, ya hara sho, ya atlichna, and、uh, long story short, he comes in and he asks me, do you drink? And I'm like, yeah, a little bit. And he's like, do you smoke? And I'm like. No, not really.、Uh -huh. And he's like, "Are you married?" <laughs> and I'm like, "Yes, I'm married." And he's like, "Good." And stamps my uh, uh, my sheet,、uh -huh. and then I'm looking down, and then I'm asking Anastasia,、uh -huh. Anastasia, what are these other places? It's like this is the other places you have to go. I'm like, really? And you go one by one, one after another, one by one after <laughs> another. And I thought it was going to take <laughs> how like, much? How much person did you visit? I think I visited five people. That day, and they ask the same. Oh, well, I'll get to that.、Okay. It, it's sort of the same, <laughs> but like just each was a different experience.、Uh -huh. um, and I thought, so, okay, so there's like five people here.、Uh, how how long is this going to take?、And、she's like, oh, maybe an hour, maybe more. Who knows? It was like seconds. After I left him, I went to、uh, the phlebotomist,、uh -huh. and. I sat down. I'm like, okay, this should be easy. I'll get my blood drawn, and she just looks at me and she does everything, and she says,、uh, I forget what she said. She said something like,、uh, "Breathe,、uh -huh. breathe. It's going to be okay," or something like that. And rolled up my sleeve,、uh -huh. and then she pulls out this needle that looks like it's <laughs> like a needle that my grandma. It's a big one, right? It was so big. It, <laughs> it looks like one. one that she would have used. I, I, I was almost <laughs> thinking that she was about to sharpen it. Sharpen it. I'm sorry. And I'm just sitting there like that's the biggest thing I've ever had inside my my veins. So she pulls it out, and then throws a cotton swab,、uh -huh. gets me, and says, stamps my thing and my sheet, and off I went to the next one. And then I saw a dinging sound,、uh -huh. and they're like, "Oh, that you have to go to this room." So I was rushed over here to this room, and that's when I talked to the virologist,、uh -huh. and he was saying like, "What kind of communicable disease do you have?" He never looked at me once. He was just、mm. looking at the sheet, stamped, gave it, and I was like, "Okay, thank you." Yeah, it looked like bureaucracy. They didn't didn't care about actual, you know, parameters. Right. 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 And、um, after that, I was moved on to the chest X-ray, which in the U.S. 
all x-rays are done, you're usually laying down. Mm -hmm. Like nine times out of ten, you're on a bed yeah. laying down. And here you're standing. Here you stand, and I've never experienced that. And so I walk in. Oh, let me preface this. Before I walk in, I didn't read the sign above. So you cannot come, right? Uh, so. No, I walked into the wrong room. Oh, I see. The room I walked into on accident was where women would get breast exams. Oh. And so this lady was screaming at me, what are you doing in there? You need to get out. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm sorry, I don't know where I'm going. And I looked up and I'm like, oh, that's like, uh, I think it's a uh, mammologist. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I'm like, oh my gosh, I should have seen, I should have known this. <laughs> so then the room I needed to go to was on the opposite side. Uh -huh. So I walk in there and the guy looks at me, he's like, get undressed. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, how far? <laughs> and he's like, all of it, take it all off. Seriously? Why off? To my boxers. Oh. I don't know why. Oh, I see. Uh, and Usually, yeah, you need to like have the up. Yeah, just the, just the top. I just mean, the top. So I I was in boxers, and then he put um, like a gown over me or something. Yeah, like some that. like protection, right? Right. Yeah, and then he proceeds to wipe down the the chest X-ray uh -huh. uh, machine, where I'm going to be like pushing uh -huh. myself into, yeah. and it was like the the most intense smell of alcohol. He wiped it down, and it like my eyes were <laughs> like crying because the fumes were just <laughs> going much, into him, and then I I thought I was in like partially mm -hmm. and I was like okay this would be good I'm up against it and then he says no and then he just pushes Push me you. right into it and nice. he said stay like that and I'm like okay I'm, I'm and here. he said breathe yeah don't breathe yeah right? yeah and then he told me that <laughs> thankfully he knew how to speak some Russian for that and uh, that then I finished with that he stamped my my sheet and yeah that that was it so that was the most extreme experience yeah, i've yeah, ever had in a hospital yeah. do you have any um, other situation in russia where you have maybe misunderstanding in the street or maybe in the shop somewhere um you've been in trouble because of like uh, the language barrier or the the knowledge of the the mm -hmm. russian your, your skills uh mostly accidentally calling uh older women like or a babushki for help yeah uh no uh, telling them like paka <laughs> like the inappropriate stuff why you even spoke with babushki in the uh, street well the ones not so much in the street but like when i'm in the grocery store oh, and buying groceries and things of that that nature or buying a ticket on the metro um so i'm like oh paka paka spasiba paka and then i walk half and then like well first they stare mm. at me weird which i i understand rude to say mm -hmm. that now uh but i'll i'll get to the door just to leave and then i'll think in my head oh, I, should have, i shouldn't have said that that was the wrong word yeah. which is normal when you're learning a new language you're mm -hmm. going to make mistakes and uh it's natural you're going to offend people um True. even though you don't mean it True. it's it's just it's just the process for language acquisition yeah but but by the way uh How do you feel? So you probably notice, right? My speech not very accurate, so I have some, right. a lot of mistakes in my grammar, mm -hmm. and my accent is not mm -hmm. very good, right? Mm -hmm. But how do you feel then? The people like Russians, let's say, mm -hmm. uh, knowing language not in very proficiency level, mm -hmm. speak to you. So do you understand everything what they saying? So do you have struggling yeah. with their English? Um, no. The, the The most important thing is to talk. Yeah, and practice I agree, I agree. and so long as you're communicating a message uh -huh. and a native speaker can understand it mm -hmm. even have to kind of decipher it a little bit yeah that's that's language mm -hmm. we're mm -hmm. talking to each other yeah yeah so i can you understand, understand you. it yeah. i can understand you completely mm -hmm. and i've talked with incredibly proficient speakers and i've mm -hmm. talked to even uh a1 a2 mm -hmm. uh, young mm -hmm. learners and the whole point of it is to to learn and just transfer information. So, mm -hmm. and to not be afraid to mm -hmm. do that. That's the biggest uh, problem I've noticed uh, with anything. It doesn't even mm -hmm. have to be language. It's It could be like when I first did jujitsu, I was like fearful for my life, shaking like this, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, on the mat, like, am I so gonna do you, something you're wrong? So you're afraid to, to look fool or something? To look foolish, to, to embarrass yourself, mm -hmm. which 
at the end of the day, if you really want to do something, if you really want to learn something, you're mm -hmm. going to have to... You have to make mistakes, right? Make mistakes, humble yourself, yeah. and just let it go. Mm -hmm. And native speakers, especially teachers, they're not there to condemn you yeah. and make you feel terrible mm -hmm. about making mistakes. They're there to guide you on your journey. And help you, yeah. And so help if you. you. If you, I believe if you're doing mistakes, so it's opportunity to fix it. So if right. you try to, if you if you don't try to speak, if you mm -hmm. don't try to use the language, right, mm -hmm. you never know that mistakes which you probably might might do, right? right. So you just yeah. you know like you shine, mm -hmm. you try to avoid mm -hmm. conversation. Yeah nobody helps you and you even doesn't know like you yeah. have something wrong with your speech right right and what i actually mentioned another uh, mention but noticed in um you say while well, i mm -hmm. was there and actually in europe as well mm -hmm. nobody then don't cares about the mistakes mm -hmm. right so while you speak good enough mm -hmm. i mean while you understandable right so nobody mm -hmm. point on your mistakes mm -hmm. if you're not asking to you know like could you please correct me nobody cares nobody and cares. if you kind of understandable Mm -hmm. So people right. just leave it, right? So they just communicate mm -hmm. with you because the communication is a really key, I believe. I, you're a hundred percent right. Like in the U.S., people have to realize there every single language that's spoken on Earth exists mm -hmm. there, including their cultures. Of course. And so Americans um, are not just one thing; they're everything. Mm -hmm. So we interact with these people on a daily basis who are coming and immigrating to the country. Yeah, it's and a melting pot, right? It's a melting I mean, pot, yeah. And we're here to help, you know, and, yeah. you know, eventually over time through, like, assimilation and through immersion, mm -hmm. like, you start to understand and, and develop the language. Uh, but the key is just not be afraid. Just, yeah. just start speaking, start talking. Like, yeah, you can probably learn about grammar, you know, all day long. You can study your book, you can write down... Uh, all the material mm -hmm. you can do all that but you're alone in that process yeah you have to have a friend to speak right people to speak you need people to speak with because that's one pro that's one act of the language mm -hmm. is to understand you know how it works but the other is to speak yeah especially when we're babies when we're babies are we learning grammar yeah. or are we speaking first by the way what do, what do you think like what is more important in the beginning uh, learn how to speak actually or try to learn how to understand so uh, what is what's more important than you say? To to learn how to speak and understand first, because in in adolescence, mm -hmm. when we're first learning our native languages, mm -hmm. no one's showing us grammar. They're showing yeah, us sounds, yeah, yeah. and we are mimicking mm -hmm. at that point. So, you know, you learn dad dad because your mom and yeah, you know yeah, and your dad are telling it, it. Mm -hmm. so you're hearing it, and then you then you start to connect the dots. Okay, that's what this means. That's what that means. Yeah, and yeah. then grammar comes True. a lot like. Yeah, long in school, after that. I believe, right? Yeah, and so feels great. Right. So if you know certain things, if you know how to speak and say certain phrases, then yes, start speaking, start exercising that muscle. And the more you exercise that muscle, then you're going to start to ask yourself questions. Yeah. Oh, okay, so what is this? Like, oh, present continuous. Oh. You even can self-correct yourself. You I can mean, even self-correct. Then, then you hear like Oops, something that sounds like weird, you know, mm -hmm. like I need to correct myself. A hundred percent. Yeah. And also every language has a, a rhythm to it. It's like music. So yeah. you can hear when something's off, like it just feels off, mm -hmm. you know, even in Russian, you know, like uh, when something's off, uh, like moi dom like moi doma or mm -hmm. maya doma like so now you're you're figuring out the rhythm and mm -hmm. the pattern the same as with english you need to figure out the rhythms and the patterns mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh yeah and just practice and i think it's important um to speak with people even if they're not native speakers initially find a friend who knows how to speak english mm -hmm. gather with them and exercise that people yeah just do master time. english time i mean like step by step mm -hmm. speak more listen more right. and then you get the result right Thank you very much. I mean, it was great. I believe it's great advice how to master right. English, right? I, th I think so. And uh, yeah. that's why I'm here. I'm here to help. Thank you. you know.